All right, so today we'll take a look at how to flash OpenTX firmware on the FlySky TH9X or even the Tonegy 9X. So I have the second version of the radio that comes with the second generation of the frequency hopping protocol from FlySky. So in case if you have the latest version of this radio and you want to flash OpenTX, then this video should definitely help you. And the reason I'm about to flash OpenTX on this radio is because with the stock firmware you can only access the ports and a few switches uh, in the aux channels. If you want to use the other auxiliary channels with the rest of the switches, then you cannot do that with the stock firmware. So, And if you want, you can use the companion to set up the models so that it's easier to configure all the settings and set up a model so that way you don't have to make all the changes using the buttons on the radio itself. Anyway, so let's get started. So this is a USB ASP device to which I'll attach a few jumper wires from the radio transmitter and I'll connect this to my computer so that we can program the chip on the radio transmitter and you can get this for about two to three dollars so it's not very expensive and next you'll have to solder a few jumper wires to the motherboard of the radio transmitter so I have the jumper wires already soldered and I've labeled them with a the paper tape so that I can connect it to the USB adapter in the right order and to solder the jumper wires to the motherboard you can take a look at this image for reference so this one is the voltage or the power pad then below it is the ground then we have the MOSI and MISO and then you have the SCK or the clock pad and followed by the reset pad over here so carefully solder the jumper wires to the pads and if you want you can label them so that it's easier to connect it to the USB adapter so after soldering the wires, we are done with the hardware part and we can move on to download the software and the files that we need. So go to the OpenTX website and where it says firmware, click on which radios are supported. And if you scroll all the way down, you can see we have FlySky 9X and it's compatible with the OpenTX 2.1 branch. So I'll click on that. And here you can see that the last stable release for this radio is 2.1.9 from OpenTX and this was made available on 15th of September 2016 so after that there have been no developments for the TH9X for OpenTX and because I'm using a Windows computer I'll download the Windows installer file and after that to flash the firmware we can either use the app or the EPE from ER9X website or if you want you can go to the downloads tab on OpenTX website and if you scroll down you can see that we have OpenTX 1 branch over there you can see that we have companion 9X so as an alternative you can even use this software to flash the firmware but this is only available for Windows so if you are using Windows you can use this as well Otherwise, you can use app and use that. So for this video, I'll use the app software. So download the file from here. All right, so now that we have both the softwares that we need, I'll go ahead and install them. So after installing the softwares, launch OpenTX. And go to settings and under radio profile click on add radio profile and click on the settings icon so here you can create a custom name for your radio profile and in the radio type select 9x with stock board if you have the stock board with the m128 chip you can use this I have the Atmega 64 chip for that I'll use 9x with stock board so I'll use this if you want you can change the language over here and in the build option you can select uh, the other options that you'd like to include in the software and if you place the cursor on the option you can see uh, the description of every other option so if you want you can enable these options and use them so here I've enabled the auto source which you can see that in model setup menus automatically set source by moving the control 
and similarly I have also enabled auto switch in which in model setup menus automatically set switch by moving the control so so when you are in the settings and if you want to assign a certain channel or switch you can simply toggle that and it will be detected in the software uh, automatically so I've enabled these two options and I've also enabled the pod scroll so that it's easier to navigate uh, through the pages then I've disabled the no flight modes page the next you have the option to select a custom image that will be shown when you turn on the radio transmitter so I already have a few pictures that I can use so I'll use this and so when you select the image you can see the preview over here so to use a custom image you'll have to set the image to this resolution which is 128 by 64 pixels then we have the option to select the default stick mode so because I'm using a mode 2 radio transmitter I'll select this to mode 2 and in the channel order I'll set that to AETR so once you have set all the parameters for the software I'll click on OK so that the radio profile is created so after setting up the radio profile we can now download the firmware file and to do that click on the download icon over here and if you want you can check for updates but there won't be any updates as such so the latest release you can see here is 2.1.9 and click on download firmware option to save the file and now the firmware file has been downloaded to the computer so now I'll connect the jumper wires to the ASP device and plug it into the computer so I've connected all the wires in the right order you can take a look at this image for reference and accordingly connect all the wires and I'm using a USB extension wire so that it's easy to connect the ASP device to my computer so while flashing the firmware make sure that your radio is off otherwise you can get a few errors now when you first connect the USB ASP device to your computer you will most likely have to update the drivers otherwise it won't work so to do that go to the device manager and you can see that in the other devices I have the USB ASP device detected but it has an exclamation mark on it and that's because the drivers are not updated so to do that you can use Zedek so I'll launch Zedek and and here you can see that USB ASP device is detected so I'll select that and the correct drivers for this is LIB USB Windows 32 so I'll select this and I'll click on install driver and you can see that we have USB ASP device detected so I've installed the right drivers for my USB ASP device if you're using any other programmer then you'll have to update the drivers for that and now I'll launch app or EPE software so the first thing that you'll have to make sure is click on the settings icon and make sure that you have selected the right programmer so because I'm using a USB ASP device I've selected that if you're using any other programmer then make sure to select that over here and the chip on my radio is at mega 64 so I'm going to select this to M64 and because I'm using a USB cable I'll select the USB option in the ports tab and after this I'll back up the original firmware that's on the radio transmitter and to do that I'll click on this icon which says read firmware from TX so I'll click on that and I'll save it somewhere and click save So if you look closely, I have a warning which says cannot set SCK period, please check for USB ASP firmware update. So in spite of that warning, 
I've had no problems in flashing the firmware so if you get the same warning as well you can ignore that and proceed and this is the original firmware that I've created a backup of and now I'll flash the OpenTX firmware so I'll click on the flash icon over here and I'll select the file that we just created using the OpenTX companion and select open and click on yes so now the OpenTX firmware file is being flashed on the TH9X so once the file is flashed you will get a pop-up which says AVR dude finished correctly and then disconnect the USB cable and also unplug the jumper wires now I'll turn on the radio transmitter for the first time with OpenTX and it says bad EEPROM data so click on any button and it will clear out so the first thing I'll do is I'll calibrate the sticks and the ports so to do that I'll click on the menu button to start and I'll center the gimbals and the ports and I'll click on menu and then I'll move all the gimbals and the ports to set the endpoints so this is how you can flash open TX on the FlySky TH9X or even the Turnigy 9X in the next video, I'll cover up on how to set up a module and bind the module that you get with this radio transmitter. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to like it. And if you're new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe. And if you have any other questions, you can comment them. So thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for more videos.